Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about sharpening, particularly how do you sharpen freehand? Using it just with your hands, with your eye, not using a jig, not using a honing guide. This will save a lot of time, but it's definitely a skill to learn. So let's dive in and take a look at some tips for this. First off, this is my sharpening station. I've had this for almost four years now, um, and I, I really, really enjoy this particular method. It's kind of pulled off of the Paul Sellers with the three here, but also I put a strop on here, and I can keep this over on my sharpening bench, or I can bring it over here to the main bench. I uh, use diamond plates. Everything I'm going to be showing you can use the exact same, whether you use sandpaper, you use whetstones, you use diamond plates. It's the exact same method. The only big difference is with diamonds, you don't have to worry about going forward with the blade. Um, you can come back and you can go forward. With whetstones, you have to be very careful about going forward. If you lift up at all, you're going to gouge it and you're going to run this, this gouge in your whetstone. Um, same thing with sandpaper. If you lift up, you're going to then rip your sandpaper. So diamond plates make that a little bit easier, but as long as you keep that method the same, um, you will find that this is the same thing needed for any of your sharpening methods. Now the first thing to know when sharpening a tool is that your whole body is part of the method. You move from your ankle all the way up to your fingertips. It's not just about your hand, it's not just about your arm, it's about the entire body. Let me show you that. When I stand here at the plate, if I just move my arm, it's going to be rocking. My fulcrum is the shoulder and I've got this rocking motion. That's going to give me a curvature in the blade. So the best method is actually put your feet apart so you can rock from one foot to the other. You can lock your entire body together. And you notice now my body is shifting so that my arm is moving perfectly in and out. It's not actually rounding. And if I let my legs do the movement, I can get a nice flat movement all the way across the plate, keeping my chisel perfectly flat on the stone. And you'll notice over time that your body will start to get used to this and your arms will learn what this movement is and you start moving a little bit less with your feet and a little bit less with your hips until eventually your arms are doing the exact same movement all by themselves just because they have learned that motion and now you're actually keeping the chisel perfectly flat across the plate. So when I do my sharpening, I'm just doing it like this, but that's because my body has learned how to do it. The best way to do it is rock from your feet first, learn this motion, and then your whole body will learn that mechanic together. Now the next thing to learn is how to grip the tool. Usually I'm going to keep a couple fingers underneath the tool and then I'm going to have one or two fingers here pushing weight down on the tip. And so this way I can lock it in and I can go across. Now with a chisel like this there isn't a huge amount of issue because it's not that wide. But if I were to grab my plain iron this gets a little wider. So I'm going to do the same thing here, fingers underneath one finger here on this corner, and I'll put my other finger over here in this corner. But the problem is with this blade, now I'm putting pressure on this corner and this corner, but nothing's in the middle. So in this case, I may actually bring another finger over here or bring a couple over this way. I want to keep an even pressure all the way across the tip of the blade. One problem a lot of people have is that they put more pressure on one side or the other, and that will actually start to skew the blade and it'll take it out of square. Now, being out of square is not a huge problem as long as it's not massively out of square. It works pretty well. You'll often see this problem come out particularly in small chisels. It's very easy to rock the chisel side to side and put more pressure on one side or the other. If you do start to see a skew in the blade, just whichever side is longer, put more pressure on that side and that will slowly take the skew out of the blade. So let's give this a squirt and show you a couple patterns that I normally do. Usually my go-to pattern is at a slight angle. I don't have the blade straight on, I have it slightly skewed. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable because my fingers are over here. I'm not twisting my arm out over here, I'm actually keeping it off to the side. And this will allow me to go in here and I'll use the whole plate. So I'll do some over here, I'll do some in the middle, and then I'll work across the plate until I get over into this side. Now the nice thing about that is it's putting scratches at a slight angle across there. So if I ever want to change it up, then I can move my body out over the way and come straight across. Or I can move my arm over this way and I can come straight across this way. And in all those methods, it's the same body movement and it's fairly easy to memorize. A lot of people out there like to do the figure eight method. This tends to use a lot of the plate very nicely and it leaves a random scratch pattern, which a lot of people really like. If I'm using a cambered iron like this one, which is rounded across there, a lot of times what I'm going to do is I start on this corner and I'm going to rock it across. So as I come to the bottom, I'm actually creating an X pattern as it cuts across. I'll be cutting here and then as it cuts across, it's now cutting over here. And the same thing, I can come over here and rock it the opposite direction. And that rocking motion 
allows me to keep an even pattern all the way across. Sometimes I'll do it this way, and I'll rock it from one tip all the way to the other. This way I make sure I get even pressure running all the way across the plate. If I really want to get into the swirls, I'll start over here, and I'll start doing swirls. This is just a little bit harder to maintain, but it's a little bit of fun and it gives you that nice swirl pattern that some people really enjoy. One of the biggest problems that most people have is maintaining the bevel angle on here. And a lot of people really get worried about having an exact bevel angle. I usually keep my bench chisels somewhere between 25 and 30 degrees. I'm not really picky on that. Uh, right now, if I had to guess, this one would be probably around 26 degrees. Uh, the actual bevel angle doesn't make a bit of difference um, if you're out a degree or two one way or the other. Oh well, don't worry about it. The problem comes if you are grinding a lot and you lower your hand, well then you're just going to be hitting the back edge of the bevel. If you lift it up, then you're just going to be hitting the tip and you're going to be changing your actual cutting angle. So trying to find exactly where to hold it is a little bit difficult. That's one of those things you'll just learn with time. And usually I'm going to set it on here, I'll, put, I'll lower it down and I'll lift it up until I feel it kind of click and it pops against the plate. I know that's the angle it needs to be at. Then I lock my wrist, I lock my arm, and I go to town at that angle. Learning what that angle feels like takes some time and skill. But I know particularly with my chisels, I sharpen them right about here. That's about 25 degrees. And with my plane irons, I sharpen them up around here. That's about 30 degrees. It's just one of those things that you have to learn over time. There is no quick way of knowing what this feels like. You're doing things freehand. And this is the point in the conversation where I have to talk about what exactly is skill. Now, I do have a bunch of honing guides, and I, I use them occasionally if I want to bring a bevel back to a specific angle, or I know that I've taken it out a bit and I want to clean it up. I'll bring a honing guide out and set an angle on there, and this will ensure that I get a good angle on the blade. But honestly, any monkey can set one of these up. They don't take a lot of skill to set up, and they don't take much of any skill to use. They do take a little bit, but not that much. Doing it freehand is all about skill. This is not something that I can just teach you and you can do perfectly right off the bat. This is something that takes a long time. Even if you were to be here in the shop and I were to be here guiding you and helping you out and showing you what you're doing wrong and how to fix it, it would still take a lot of time to work through. It's something that you have to get a muscle memory for. And that's one of the big differences between learning a skill and getting a tool that can do it for you. You're not going to be able to do this perfectly right off the bat. It's something that's going to take a while. And over a year or two of practicing it, you're going to find you get better and better at it. And suddenly one day you realize, wow, I, I don't even think about it anymore. I just sharpen it and go back to town. And that's one of the great things about not using guides is it doesn't take any time at all. To sharpen a chisel, it literally is 30 seconds or less. And I can go from incredibly dull to incredibly sharp. It's just boom, 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 and away we go. I don't have to worry about the guide. For sharpening an iron, it takes more time to take apart the plane than it does actually to sharpen it. Just one, two, three, and we go to town. I don't have to worry about setting up with a guide. I don't have to worry about other items on there. It just sharpens very quickly. The other thing that a lot of people will ask about is secondary bevels. And that is I sharpen the primary bevel at this, and then I'll lift it up a little bit to do the tip right for the, the final sharpening. And for most hand tool sharpening, there really isn't a huge need for that because it goes rather quickly. Uh, why mess around with having a secondary bevel? It's just another chance to mess something up. Now, that, that's not to say that secondary bevels are bad. I have a lot of good friends who use them regularly, and everyone's going to have a little bit different. If you find that you like a secondary bevel, then great, go for it. But I find it's one more step that you have to think through, so if you don't need it, why mess with it? One of the fastest ways to learn is to do. The more you do it, the more you will learn and the easier it becomes over time. Just think about the way your whole body is working. Think about how your ankles feel. Think about how your knees feel. Think about your elbows and shoulders. And just thinking about how it feels will ingrain that body motion into your brain. And over time, you'll notice that it really just doesn't take that much time at all to sharpen. And I can take a blade from one to two to three, onto the strop, and without even touching this, I know that this blade is very, very good and will treat me well because I know what that body mechanic feels like. I know what the elbows feel like. I know what the knees feel like. And I know that this blade is incredibly sharp and ready to go, hitting every hair on a first pass. And that is the fantastic thing about hand tool sharpening is once you learn it, once you've taught yourself that skill, this becomes incredibly fast, incredibly efficient, and a lot of fun because you're not relying on other things to tell you if things are right. You're just trusting your body. 
And implementing hand tools in general into your everyday practice will teach you some more of those skills. It's all about the body mechanics and how it actually feels. So get out in the shop and don't be afraid to mess up a little bit. If you do mess up on the blade, oh well, you can fix it. Next sharpening will make it a little bit better. And every time you do it, you're gonna get a little bit better and a little bit better, and that's how you build skill. It's not something can be done overnight. It's not something you can just think about or read about and do it well. It's something you just have to practice. So have a little bit of fun with it. I hope this has helped you out a bit. A freehand sharpening isn't something you should be afraid of. It's something that should flow from you and just be a part of who you are because you've learned it over time. And if this has helped you out, please let me know down below. Also, if you have any tips or ideas that have really helped you out in the past, throw those in the comments down below and I'd love to hear those. So I think that's about it for today. If you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. <laughs> you know those things. I say them a lot, but that's because it really does help out the channel and thank you for that. Also, if you want to take it one step farther, you can click the join button down there or help out on Patreon. I am not taking on any sponsors right now and I want to make this channel more of what I want to say to you rather than what sponsors want me to say. So I hope you like that. If you did, think about becoming a patron and that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I don't know why it's called freehand sharpening. I mean, I actually paid quite a bit for this hand.